What is going on today, guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jay. Uh, thanks for stopping by and checking me out. So today I thought we'd take a closer look at the Auto Audio 1111 or the 2222 or the... I don't know what it's called. Here's the name up on the screen. How do you pronounce it? You tell me. I'm just going to stick with 1111 because that seems simple enough. So this amplifier, if you're not familiar with it already, has crushing distortion tones, more saturation, more gain than I've ever heard in any other amplifier sim out there on the market uh, to date. So you're not having deja vu. I did already review this amp a few weeks ago. However, I had some issues with the audio quality in that video. Uh, apparently it wasn't recognizing or registering the changes I was making to the amp in real time on the screen. So we're gonna do it again. And that's okay because you know what? This amplifier deserves a second look. I think it's not as well known because it's from a new company, but the developers that created it, I think they really hit gold here with this one because this thing is very, very unique compared to every, everything else that's out there on the market right now. It um, offers, like I said, a ton of gain um, and so many different options. So let's take a look at the user interface now, put it up on the screen, and you can see uh, it's a clean look. It's an, I love this UI, it looks really cool. Um, it's got that dark, evil look to it, pretty sinister. And at first glance, it seems like a very basic amplifier. There's not much to it, right? But let's take a deeper dive because there's a lot of hidden features. All right, so up on the screen here, you can see you've got obviously your gain, your preamp gain, bass, mid, treble, master volume, presence, and depth. Uh, seems simple enough. But again, there's a lot of features hidden on the inside. So let's get under the hood and check this thing out. This icon over here, if you click on this little circular icon, it pulls up a list of nine different impedance curves. Uh, I think these essentially are like emulations of different speaker cabinet ohm impedances, I guess. I don't know. But uh, anyways, if you cycle through them, uh, the first one is a very scooped sound. So the mids are really cut out completely. And as you work your way down the list, the mids become more and more pronounced. So that's what you get there. Uh, down here in the left-hand corner is the... Uh, bank of presets that comes preloaded and there are dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of different presets. So definitely something in there to get you started. I'm sure you're going to find something you like. This next drop down menu, I don't really know how to categorize this, but uh, it further enhances the tone and, and you know, these kind of sound like IRs, but I think they're not exactly IRs. I don't know what they are. You know, you can use any one of these in combination with any of the presets. So basically your combinations are pretty much endless. Um, and then over here on the right hand side, let's go up here to the OA, Auto Audio. Click on this icon here and you get the bank of preloaded IRs of which there are 22. Uh, they all sound really good and they're all really different from one another. So, I mean, again, there's something in here for every taste. Uh, they really sound cool. And you know, if you don't like any of them for some reason, I don't know why you wouldn't, but if you didn't, you can uh, select to turn off the IR and load your own IRs in your DAW and uh, go to town with that. So down here, this is a very special feature. This menu here is the mono stereo feature, which basically allows you to uh, emulate what it sounds like to have a double tracked guitar. It basically, to my ears, it sounds like the Haas effect. So if you're familiar with double tracking your guitars, you know it's a pain in the ass to do that. If you don't have to, why bother, right? So some people, what they'll do is they'll record something once, they'll perform it one time, record it the one time, and then they'll double track it, pan one left, pan one right, and then one of those tracks will be delayed by a few milliseconds, giving it that stereo width sound. It's kind of a, it's a tricky way, it's an easy way to basically get your uh, double track sound without having to double track. So that allows you to see what it sounds like uh, without having to go through all that. So that's a pretty cool feature. I haven't really seen that on any other amp sim up until now. And that's really cool right there. On the back of the amp, now if you click on the top of the head here anywhere, it toggles between the front and the back. So the back of the amp head has a ton more features to go through. I'm just gonna fly through them. So you've got uh, some kind of a typical uh, modification here. I'm not sure exactly what it does, but I think it gives it more push, a little more trouble, as does this uh, punish toggle switch here. To me, that sounds a bit like a TS-9. It's kind of like more, you know, uh, trouble sound and a little more volume, a little more gain. And then you've got 10 dBs of clean boost if you want that. That's nice as well. If you don't really want to change the tone, you just want to push it a little harder into the front of the amp. And then lastly here, this third toggle is uh, a low boost. 
not something I would use personally, but if you have a guitar that's got really a really weak signal, low output pickups, or they're very brittle and bright sounding, uh, like that Seymour Duncan Full Shred that I have, you might want to use the low toggle here, add some depth to it that way. So then you've got your noise gate right here. Uh, you've got a choice of three different uh, power tubes to use, which is nice. You've got the EL34s, 6L6s, and the KT88s, which is, I think, a more modern sounding one. So you can play around with those two. Um, all these knobs are just going to further tweak the tone that you've already set on the front of the amp. This amplitude button knob, rather, this works a lot like uh, a powered amp master volume. Kind of pretty much the same. I don't know. And then your cabinets, you can uh, you can change them here as well. Is it front of the front of the screen, change them there, or the back of the screen. Either way. Yeah. And then, like I said, if you want to bypass the IRs completely, boom, they're off. Load your own and your DAW, you're good to go. So. I figured it just might be easy if I just cycle through a couple riffs here with some of the presets that I created. But first, let me give you a taste of what you can expect when you first open this thing up. So this is the default setting when you first open it. This is what you get. It sounds pretty cool. That's a good launching off point. I like that a lot. And it does have the mono stereo effect engaged on that. So if we want to go ahead and deselect that, turn it off, here's what that same uh, amp sounds like with that and just mono. Pretty cool, right? Nice and dry, uh, heavy tone. And that's only the gains at seven. So I mean, I've said this before, you know, listen with your ears more so than with your eyes. Don't really worry or pay attention to what the number value is on the knobs that you're turning. At the end of the day, you want the tone to sound good. I mean, just turn the knobs until it sounds good, you know, find what you need to get the right tone. So this one's on seven. So obviously this thing has a lot of gain on tap. I don't even see myself really using that much uh, gain per se in, in a normal recording setting, but... You might want it, who knows, it's there if you need it. Definitely this thing goes to 11, and maybe that's why they named it the 1111, I don't know. Uh, so you know what, let's just go to some of my presets that I've come up with here and uh, see what they sound like. So this first one, it's kind of an inside joke. Every first preset that I make and every new amp sim that I get, I call Gator Done. Why, I don't know, it's kind of stupid, but that's what I do, so Gator Done. <laughs> Then of course you've got uh, a low gain tone. Here, let's check that out. So this thing can go low gain, yeah. You're not really gonna get Stevie Ray Vaughan out of this. You're not gonna get Andy Timmons out of this amp, you know, that, that kind of a tone. But you can certainly dial down the gain if you want to, you know, for whatever reason. Why would you? Because that's not really what this amp is meant for. But you can do it if you want to, so it's there. Um, this one's a little bit heavier. Let's check this out. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, this one's called The Gator Done, so def definitely different. three pretty cool uh, seven string bliss let's see what we got this is the one I use for the opening track by the way This one's called the 51 Shitty because <laughs> it was my really fast, feeble attempt to make a 5150 sounding amp, you know, kind of the late 70s sound. Uh, 
But yeah, that one I've got the mono stereo engaged. And it sounds really cool though. I mean, it's definitely a cool effect. You know, it's, it's a little gimmicky, but... <laughs> It gives you a very full sounding uh, tone for sure. I mean, especially if you're playing this in a standalone version and you don't have a DAW and you don't have other plugins to add, uh, you know, all those digital effects and stuff like that, this will give it a fuller sound without having to go with delays, reverb, chorus, all that good stuff. And it's, it's pretty cool. So this thing is a lot of fun, man. I got to say. Uh, and they do have a two-week trial. So free trial. Check it out. You're going to like it. You know, you're going to want to get it. So see what it's worth, man. Check it out. Play around with it. And I think the developers of this amp basically created this thing for the tone tweaker, the tone chaser, you know, the knob turner, the person who wants to just kind of experiment with your sound and see what you can come up with. Maybe you have a tone in your head already that you're trying to get. You can't get it with another amp. This thing will get you there. It's got a lot of gain. It's got too much gain in my in my opinion. But I mean, I'd rather have more than enough than not enough, right? So definitely a lot of fun with this thing. Now, I will say one more thing about this amp too. Um, whereas most amplifier, most amp sims, they kind of give you a frequency range, you know, that you can hear. And it's like this. Well, the auto audio gives you like this much more. I feel like there's more lows and there's more highs, higher highs than there are with a lot of other amp sims. And because of that, it's kind of a double-edged sword. I mean, there's going to be frequencies that you want to kind of pull out, you know, a little bit, you know, tailor it back a little. But on the other hand, it gives you just a larger palette to experiment with. So uh, what I did here for the opening track is all I did was I threw on the... Um, a little low pass and high pass and that's it. I mean, nothing else as you can see here. It just kind of dropped out some of those really low and really high frequencies so it wasn't too fizzy or too thumpy and garbled sounding. But it's all there if you want to do it. And uh, let's even check it out. Let's see what this thing sounds like with a little bit of room uh, reverb. Just to, just to kind of fill, fill it out a little bit, right? Of course, you gotta turn it on. throw on something a little heavier here. There it is. So I don't know what I'm playing, but just to give you a sense of what it sounds like. This thing's really cool. You guys got to check it out. It's it's too much fun. Uh, Auto Audio, the 1111, killer amp, kills every kills the competition. This thing has more distortion than anything on the market. Go get it, man. I don't know. Let me know what you think. It's a lot of fun. You got to check it out. I'm out of here. It's almost Christmas. Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will talk to you guys soon. See ya!